The hills are alive with the sound of Andy Fire Charger. What's going on, YouTube? Um, this is going to be a lesson on words of knowledge. I had a very awesome experience today where I, uh, I was just seeking to be obedient to the Lord. I said, Lord, um, you know, I haven't been doing so good lately. Uh, let's do something that you want me to do. You know, I just listened to a sermon about uh, power and authority, and it went back to Philippians 2, where it said that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient, even unto death, the death of the cross. And because of that, God highly exalted him. And, uh, you know, so it's just authority, uh, all that sort of stuff comes through obedience, through relationship. So I'll link that if you want to see it. Um, I had an awesome experience today where I called a, uh, I called a guy that was asking for, you know, some input because, um, you know, he just had some issues going on in his life. And I said, yeah, I'll call you and, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, talk to you. So this morning I said, Hey Lord, what do you want to do? And immediately the Lord told me to call this guy. So I called him and we had a we had a good long conversation and I mean we we spoke about the issues he was dealing with but then the conversation turned to okay you need to be able to to discern the voice of the Lord versus the voice of the enemy and you need to be able to uh know who's speaking so I'd been through similar stuff where people have, you know, showed me how to hear the Holy Spirit. And I'm better at it now than I have been in the past. And I think a lot of people, they miss it because the Holy Spirit speaks in your conscience. You know, it's a still small voice. And oftentimes people mistake the voice of the Lord for themselves. Um... I, I know that sounds funny, but it is what it is. You know, those of you that know what I'm talking about can vouch for this. Uh, quite often, the Holy Spirit will speak spontaneously. Uh, it'll be a whisper. Sometimes it'll be a whisper on repeat. You know, it'll be a thought that just keeps coming up, coming up. So um, I was talking to him about this very issue, and I was saying, you know, you need to be able to discern the voice of the Lord because I said this to him. He said, you know, I don't feel that I hear the Lord very well. And I said, okay, are you born again? You know, are you saved? He said, he admitted yes. I said, okay. Uh, you know, so the Lord is your shepherd and you're a sheep? Okay, yes. Well, then if you believe that, then the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So the Bible says that you hear his voice. You just need to learn what that sounds like, what that looks like. So we had, um, we had this interesting thing come up where I feel the Lord gave me this idea to walk him through a word of knowledge because I've had other people do this to me and it's been very exciting. Uh, I spoke to a neighbor of mine when I lived in Ohio and I was standing in the backyard witnessing to him and he had been in prison for dealing drugs. So when I was witnessing to him, talking to him about the end times and such, he was really open to it and, you know, all ears. And I said, the Lord still speaks to his people. There's still the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation today. And I said, I'm going to trust the Lord right now, and I'm going to step out, and I believe he's going to give me something to, you know, verify what I've said. You know, he's going to confirm this word that I've spoken to you. And I just said, uh, I said, Lord, um, I just ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you give me something unique about him that will verify what I'm saying. And I just... I sat there and I relaxed and I just said, okay, I'm going to take a step of faith here. And I just went with the first thoughts that came to my mind. I said, okay, you have a sister, she's blonde and her name is, and I paused for just a second and it just shot in my mind. I said, 
Amber. And he was like, and I freaked out too because I was, I was just as startled that it came to me that quickly. So I shared this testimony with the guy that I was on the phone with today. And I said, okay, do you hear the voice of the Lord? You just don't recognize it. So let me introduce you to that. And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step of faith. We're going to pray in agreement. And I'm going to say, okay, Lord, uh, I just ask. And I told him to do it this way. Uh, Lord, will you show me something unique about Andy Firecharger, which will um, verify this, you know, to show me that I'm hearing your voice. And, you know, here's how I kind of coached him. I said, okay, now relax. Because he said, um, you know, later on he said, well, I felt like I had to concentrate really hard. I said, no, 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 you've got it backwards. Because the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, you're looking for a still, small voice. If you're concentrating too hard, you're trying to draw it out of the flesh. You're trying to draw it out of your own mind. And the information isn't there anyway. What you're trying to do is you're trying to relax. You're trying to get the flesh to shut up long enough for the Holy Spirit to speak. You know, and I spoke this in a very positive, faith-filled way. And I said, okay, the Lord is going to do this because it's the Lord's will that you discern His voice. It's the Lord's will that you know His voice and hear Him. So I just said... Um, you know, I believe the Lord's going to do this. I spoke with faith, believing that the Lord would do this, and He did it. So a lot of times, faith-filled matters have to be spoken with anticipation. You have to speak with expectancy that the Lord is going to do what He said He would do. You know, and it's not like you're, it's not like you're forcing the hand of God. You're simply coming into agreement with what he said in the word that he would do. And he said that he speaks to his children. So, sorry if I'm dragging this on, but I want to I want to share details because this is something that people struggle with and they need a walkthrough. So I said, okay. Um, you know, first, we openly prayed to the Holy Spirit because I didn't want him to think that it's his flesh. I didn't want him to think that it's me. And I just said, Okay, we're going to open with a quick prayer, and you just say, Holy Spirit, I ask that you give me something unique about Andy Firecharger that uh, is relevant, that only would matter to him, right? And again, I said, okay, just relax. And I want you to close your eyes, relax, and just take a step of faith on the first thought that comes to your mind. So, this is where people begin to miss it, because the Holy Spirit speaks so in tune with your own voice that people mistake it for themselves, okay? The Bible says that, uh, you know, don't you know that he who joins himself to a prostitute, the two become one flesh? Uh, but then it goes on to say, the... Uh, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. We have the mind of Christ. So you have his mind right in here sharing the same space with your mind. That's why people mistake the voice of the Lord, because it sounds like you. You discern it by the content of the message. You know, is it an answer to prayer? Is it something that encourages righteousness? Is it... Um, a piece of knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise known that spontaneously came to your mind. So, I said, just relax. Go with the first thought that comes to your mind and take a step of faith and just step out on it. So, he kind of he kind of relaxed for a minute. Uh, he got a little quiet. And I said, I believe you've already heard it. You just need to take that step of faith because... The Lord will not give you obvious things. He'll give you things that, you know, you may be like, oh, that's weird. You know, that doesn't make any sense. So he said, jelly bean. And he's like, I know that sounds weird, but jelly bean. And I said, it, it, took a, it took a second for me to process it. And I was like, 
and I just got covered with goosebumps because I realized what it was. I have a car. It's a little red Honda Civic, and it's it's really round, and it's uh, it's just a funny looking car. And I nicknamed it my jelly bean. It looks like a jelly bean going down the road. It's way too small for me. It's a joke every time I get out of it. People are just like, ha, 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 big guy, little car, right? And it was mind-blowing, you know, because I was like, dude, you just got your first word of knowledge. The Lord just showed you that he speaks. To you. So I would encourage you to do this exercise with a friend, you know, somebody you trust, somebody who's not going to condemn you if you miss it, you have to be willing to make mistakes because consider this, a father who's training his child to ride a bike, okay, if the child goes, you know, zigzagging down the road and crashes into the curb and falls off, is the father going to say, I can't believe you screwed up. You're such a knucklehead idiot. No, the father's not going to do that. He's going to say, Okay, you know, that was a good try. Let's get up and let's do it again. You have to be willing to make mistakes. You have to take that step of faith. If you don't take risk, you're not going to see the supernatural. I love the supernatural. You know, we live in a generation where people are tired of, you know, just church chatter and people that are perceived as hypocritical Christians. You know, they're tired of the... You know, they just, they view church as a bunch of do's and don'ts. What they need to experience is the power of God. Paul said, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So do this exercise with a friend that you trust, somebody who's not going to condemn you for making a mistake. And just say, okay, Lord, give me something unique about this person that only you would know that I wouldn't know. So the jelly bean thing was just amazing to both of us. And, uh, you know, very relevant to me. I don't know anybody that calls their car a jelly bean. Uh, it's just, it's a funny thing, and the Lord knows it's funny to me. So after this conversation, I was driving down the highway, and the Lord said something interesting to me because I was still meditating on this. He said, that word that you received has multiple layers. And as I was thinking that, I was like, hmm, multiple layers. Now consider this car that I have is 20 plus years old, you know. The paint's faded, it's got high mileage, uh, you know, burns a little oil, uh, you know, it's got dents and dings and all that stuff. So I'm driving down the highway meditating on what had just occurred. The Holy Spirit says, this word has multiple layers. And as I meditated on that, I literally saw the exact same model car go down the road beside me and it had brand new fresh paint, looked like it was a brand new car. Exact same model, exact same color. And the Holy Spirit said to me, that's how you are in the spirit. You know, your, your car that you own is how you appear in the flesh. You know, you appear dented and dinged and faded paint and high mileage and beat up and worn out. But in the spirit, you appear new. You appear brand new. I mean, the car, uh, 20 something years old, it looked like it just rolled off, you know, the car lot from the factory 20 years ago. So, you know, that was amazing to me. Um, Holy Spirit, what else do you want to say? I just want to say. That, uh, you know, we need to, we need to take more steps of faith because the world has got to see that Jesus is real and it's, it's experiences like this that encourage people. Like the reason that I feel that this worked was because I was sacrificing my time to minister to another person. You know, I was being obedient to what the Holy Spirit told me to do. And because the Holy Spirit told me to call this guy, I already knew by faith that if the Holy Spirit wanted me to call him, that the Holy Spirit would then deal with the issues that he was seeking the Lord about. So, 
I have so much more to say about other topics, but I just I want you to be encouraged about words of knowledge. It's not impossible for you. Anyone who receives the Holy Spirit has all the gifts of the Holy Spirit because it's not that one person receives the gift of prophecy or one person receives the gift of miracles. When you receive the Holy Spirit, He has all His abilities with Him. So when it says gifts of healings, it very specifically says gifts of healing. So when you go lay hands on a person, it's not that a certain minister has the gift of healing and that that's his only gift and that he uses it as he chooses. The thing is that every single healing is a gift of healing because it's just like salvation. It can't be earned. Um, you know, it's not something that you can be good enough or somehow you impress God to earn it. You receive it by faith. You know, there's an element of faith that's required, but it's not that one person has this gift, one person has that gift. You either have the Holy Spirit or you don't. And the Holy Spirit has all the gifts within Him. And then, when you jump into a situation which requires that uh, gift, when you put a draw on the Holy Spirit like we did, we said, okay, Lord, uh, what we want to do is we want to use this opportunity to show Him how to hear the Lord. So we put a draw on the Holy Spirit. And because of that, because it was um, in response to the Lord telling me to do something, to minister to someone else, I believe drawing on that gift caused that gift to be in operation. So certain ministers may be very strong in prophecy or very strong in words of wisdom or strong in tongues, diversities of tongues. Because those are the gifts that they draw upon. They don't, they don't put themselves in situations to prophesy, you know. But if they would take the steps of faith to move towards a word of prophecy, I don't believe that that would be withheld from them, you know. It's just like going to the gym. You have all your muscles, but if you train certain muscles, that muscle is going to grow and be stronger. So it's just a matter of exercising the gifts. There's a there's a verse about that, about exercising uh, the gifts. So, I don't want to run too much longer. I just want to encourage you, go do this with a friend that will encourage you, that will learn with you. Because the, the church has got to regain this understanding and reach a lost world that's tired of empty chatter. You know, we've got to reach them with power. That's why Jesus taught disciples to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to do supernatural things because it confirms the word. Read the end of Mark 16. You know, he said, those who believe will cast out devils, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, this and that. And then it goes on to say that he went with them confirming the word you know so seek these things and you will find them with that i say god bless and uh, i look forward to making more stuff please take a step of faith and try this and don't give up god bless